Joining us now to talk uh, even closer to home as to the impact that this will have on the families of America is talk about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. It's the child tax credit, and it's uh, near and dear to my heart for a couple of reasons. And Kathy Roos is joining us. He's a senior fellow here at the Family Research Council, and it's near and dear to me because I have five kids, uh, but also because it was an idea that originated with FRC back in the early 90s, and um, President Bush uh, doubled it, but now it could go away. Yes, and, and if it does, we're talking about the single largest benefit for families in the U.S. tax code. This is not to be diminished. This is huge, and it's potentially going to go away in January if President Obama and the Democrats in Congress let it slip away. It'll be slashed in half, excuse me. Let's talk about the, the rationale for the, fam the, for the child tax credit. It's a simple proposition that families are in a better position to make decisions about their own resources in terms of spending it for their children than a government bureaucrat or institution. So this child tax credit is $1,000 per child. That's a meaningful tax credit we would actually support at the Family Research Council, well, increasing it to 5000 right. per child, which would more accurately, accurately reflect the reality of child rearing today. But it's a meaningful tax uh, benefit for families, and, in, in, and it's the largest benefit that families enjoy today. So it's extremely it's important. It's pro-child, too. It's very pro-child. And, and for those critics out there who would say, well, you know, you, you just want those for, for those families that have big kids that drive big cars. Yeah. And look, those kids that we're raising, and you have three? Two. Two. You need to catch Maybe up. Maybe you know something right. I don't know. Okay. Well, you need two. to catch up. Well, those are the future taxpayers for America. They're the ones that are going to be paying the Social Security for those that, uh, you know, Very don't important. have any kids. It's so these, these kids that, that these families are being... You know, I mean, obviously $1,000 is not making the difference, but it helps. It helps. And the way I like to think about it is you can make meaningful decisions with your own resources that no government bureaucrat would ever do. One thing that helps in our family and many families like ours is we're able to send our children to private religious school. Now, the Obama administration is not going to help, you know, go out of its way to help anybody do that. But if you're allowed to be, keep a little bit more of your own money, you're able to do that. And I want to mention... I'm a stay-at-home mom. I work from home. Having this kind of meaningful child tax credit will allow more moms or dads to raise their children in their own home. You don't have to wade into the whole mommy wars or make a decision about daycare or whatever to agree that what's best for families is the ability to decide for themselves what kind of arrangement they want for their, for their children in terms of child rearing. I mean, there's no question that we make better decisions for our own kids in terms of resources than somebody who doesn't know them and doesn't know us. So it, it's, it's kind of this, it's this um, basic idea is who is best suited to make decisions about families' resources, parents themselves or big government on our backs. That's right. Let's, uh, my, my own family, I have 34 nieces and nephews. Wow. And it is the immediate benefit. There's a lot of stay-home parents well, that, among That's those. just enough to cover the Christmas cards that you're <laughs> going to send with all of them. Huh? It's, it's, um, it's, we're, we're very pro-family in the McCluskey household. Except you, you think about it, that's $17,000 a year that my family alone would be losing. Um, and that is, you're absolutely right, that's things that they pay for, their, for, for schools because they, they, the public systems around their areas aren't good, or even for homeschooling, for supplies, for a number of different things that can better benefit the child, immediate benefits, right. to make sure that that child is a more productive, not only a more productive citizen, except God help us, a more productive taxpayer. Right. Now this not only this phases out uh, January J December thirty yes. first. Yep. It is cut in half. That's right, cut in half. And I want to clarify something. There's a misconception that President Obama actually supports increasing the child tax credit, as do we. He does not. What he promotes is increasing the child care tax credit. Very oh. different. That is to go to families when both. Only, only families where both parents work outside of the home and denied to families like mine where a parent stays home. So what he's pushing is left-wing social engineering through the tax code and discrimination against traditional families with stay-at-home moms like me. So he's not with us on increasing right. the child tax credit. We, we need to maintain it for sure, and that's up to Congress right now and the president. We'd like to increase it but it can't be slashed in half. That would be devastating to many families. Yeah, that child care credit is only right. if you use a, uh, a daycare center or someplace like that. So That's right. So you don't have, again, you don't have the choice as to how you're going to care for your own children. Right. Well, uh, this is, a, as you mentioned, a very significant issue. And, and a, a tax 
increase that families would feel immediately. And, uh, you know, most of these families that are raising the kids right now in this environment, the last thing they need is to see a $500, $1,000, 15 depending on how many kids they have. That's what we're talking about. That's a huge increase that they'd feel overnight.